my name is Vegan Diver Cat, and today I'm talking to you guys about Mike Dive Ball Expeditions, which is hands down probably the coolest, best diving I have ever done. So if you're curious about that, make sure to stay tuned for the video about how to volunteer on Mike Ball. So before we get started, feel free to join the Ocean Love and Tribe, subscribe, like all that jazz, but bell icon, I don't know. I also have an ocean pancake conservation, marine sustainability podcast, which you guys should check out. I talk to fantastic experts from the field of conservation and sustainability and learn all about gill nets and shark safe barriers and plastic pollution and veganism and what all that means and how to protect our oceans better. So if you're curious about that, head on over there uh, after you've watched this video, of course. You can watch my video about my favorite dive spots in the world and hands down you guys know I love diving I've been a scuba diving instructor for seven years I've been diving since 2008 it is it is my biggest passion in this world being underwater but genuinely one of the best weeks of my life was on board spoil sport which is Mike ball dives expedition boat now what happens is Mike ball have this beautiful boat where they get high quality clientele to come on board and experience some of the best dive uh, Queensland, the Great Barrier Reef has to offer. So not only do they do the beautiful dive sites on the Great Barrier Reef, but because it is a seven day expedition, you actually have a chance to go out into the Coral Sea to dive on Osprey Reef. I've already talked about this a little bit in my video about the dive torch review, Orca Torch, so make sure to check that out as well. However, um, yeah, I just kind of want to give you a rundown of what it was like. So to become a volunteer, all you have to do is head on over to the Mike Ball website and sign up. Unfortunately, there is typically an extremely long waiting list because as you will see later on in this video, it is an epic trip. So. In terms of volunteering, there are two positions. You can either be a dive deck volunteer, where they require you to be a dive level of dive master or above, where you help out on the dive tech. You help customers with their scuba diving equipment. You dry towels, you prep things, you uh, are surface lookout watch, you take notes, you make sure people are logging in and out, and you basically help customers put their fins on, locate the correct gear, be a friendly, smiling face for them to to depend on and cut up a lot of oranges. My really good friend Dave actually did this job and he loved it and he had the best time and he's the coolest person ever but anyway we're not going to get into that. The other job which is the one I did is a hostie so you kind of help out in the kitchen so you're doing everything from making the salads in the morning, setting the tables, vacuuming, emptying bins, chopping up anything that the chef needs, and in general just helping out on the inside of the boat. Now I know I'm a scuba diving instructor and would have ideally liked to work on the dive deck, but they gave me a call like, hey, we have a spot open in three weeks, do you want to be a hostie? And I was like, hell yes, anything to get on the Mike Dive Ball boat. So I would honestly recommend applying for both either it doesn't matter you still get to be on this incredible boat surrounded by incredible people doing incredible dives so either which one 10 out of 10. either way both of them are a lot of work now this dive trip is usually about five and a half thousand dollars and it is worth every penny but as a dive volunteer or a hosty volunteer you have to earn your keep which means you are working very hard but the beautiful thing is everyone on board is working really hard and the atmosphere is just so positive that you don't even notice it yeah you wake up at 5 30 5 45 you're up there by 6 chopping up your fruits and veggies 
getting things ready for the customers and you basically don't see your cabin until 8 p.m. in the evening. Of course, the people are really lovely and they give you breaks to read a book or go for dives, of course. That's most of your breaks because you eat, sleep, work, dive, repeat. It is an incredible experience and all the dives there were fantastic. So because I'm an instructor, I quite often uh, jumped in with other customers, helped kind of be a dive guide for them, which as you guys know, I love doing. Personally, I much prefer scuba diving when I have customers or students with me because I have the chance to show them things. And by showing them things, I get to kind of engage my beginner's brain and enjoy it even more. Um, I saw some of the most beautiful coral I have ever seen, incredible marine biodiversity on Osprey Reef, hands down. Oh my goodness, can you imagine a dive site where the surface of the reef, I mean the top of the reef is at around 5 meters and then it's a steep vertical drop to 2,000 meters and this is just kind of a sea mound out of nowhere uh, in the ocean where so many fish are attracted to. If you guys would have seen Blue Planet or any of the David Attenborough, he most recently did the one, the, the Great Bear Reef or the Reefs. Anyway, Osprey is featured on there. You can actually see the spots that he's talking about and he takes the little submarine down there. And this is because this spot is incredible. There are so many sharks to see there. There are so many beautiful sponge corals and sea fans and some of the most exquisitely colored corals in general on that wall. I mean, we drifted down and I could have just stopped for hours and just looked at these beautiful colors. So I'm trying to include some clips for you guys to get a bit of an overview, but it is impossible to do this place justice, especially with my not so great little camera. But hands down, coolest thing ever. Also, once you're on Osprey, they do do a shark feeding dive there where they feed them like tuna heads and other like low um, low calorie items meaning the sharks still follow natural predation in instincts where this doesn't fill them up and they do it once a week so it shouldn't be changing their behavior I made a whole video about um, does feeding sharks cause shark attacks or anything like that make sure to check that one out but it was a fantastic experience. So you kind of sit in this amphitheater, which is now basically designated for these shark feeding watches, and you see tens and tens of reef sharks gather around there um, and feed on these tuna heads, which is what the instructors and dive masters kind of feed them. And it's incredible, and you see these sharks frenzying and swimming all around you, and there's bubbles everywhere, and it's beautiful. And then afterwards, you get to have a little bit of swim around and you will see multiple species of sharks still hanging out and swimming along with you. So it was uh, reef sharks, some nurse sharks, like tawny, tawny sharks, incredible. Uh, one of my favorite dive sites there, of course, is, uh, I have it written down, the Pinnacle, the Lighthouse. And this is just a massive pinnacle rising from about 30 meters of depth to near the surface and the whole thing is just thriving with life. It's another one of those kind of um, sea mounds in the middle of nowhere, meaning so many fish are attracted to it. As you descend down there, you see masses of schools of like twirling barracuda and giant trevally and groupers swimming all around, beautiful coral with tiny little crabs hiding in there. There's electric clams. It's just beautiful. This is also the spot where I jumped in on the line after the dive and got to see a minke whale. Coolest thing ever about Mike Ball expeditions, April to June, July, you have the chance to go on the minke whale expeditions, which they don't go out to the coral sea. However, you get to swim with minkies and they see up to 15 or 20 at a time. What these minkies are extremely curious and they'll actually swim around the boat and um, you have to hold on to a line for the safety of yourself and the whales. So you're holding on to the line but you're surrounded by these whales all around and it's incredible. So make sure to book into that point. So if you want to volunteer, highly recommend it. If you have the finances to go as a customer, recommend it even more. It was a fantastic experience. I made friends for life on that boat. Shout out to you guys. Uh, Thank you so much for giving me one of the best diving trips of my life. 
The diving was amazing, the people were amazing, the customers are fascinating, genuinely met some really cool people on board. And then, of course, there is some fun stuff too. So twice during that week, because the, the dive trip is split into three and four days, where customers can either do three, four, or the whole seven. And at each of the ends of these trips, there is a party night. So you get your Hawaiian shirts on, um, the captain might come out, play a little bit of a guitar, uh, sing a little bit. There might be live music, they're singing, dancing, there is alcohol served, so you have a good time. Um, of course, they're very strict in terms of making sure if you do drink, that is the end of diving for the day, and next day you should most definitely not be hungover and make sure to stay hydrated because that's very important for scuba diving. But overall, this trip was amazing. I am so thankful I got the chance to go on there and hopefully I'll get the chance to go again because truly it was one of the coolest things I have ever done. And yeah, I miss, I miss the friends I made on that boat and they have the coolest life. One week on, one week off, going out to the Great Barrier Reef, seeing those sunrises and sunsets every day. And that is living. So yeah, if you guys are curious more about other volunteering opportunities out on the Great Barrier Reef or anything like that, make sure to check out Reef Restoration Foundation where it can help plant coral nurseries. You can also check out AIMS, uh, which is the Australian Institute of Marine Science. So I did some volunteering with them, which was more like citizen science stuff where you learn about how to gather data and things like that. Fascinating times. I love diving the Great Barrier Reef. And it just reminds us why we need to protect it. Because there are still many areas of the Great Barrier Reef which are untouched by bleaching or minimally touched, which are healthy, thriving, and just show us what we're working to protect. So, yes, thank you for watching this video. Thank you guys so much to all my Patreon and donation uh, people who allow me to do what I do, which is create ocean-friendly content to help everyone learn a bit better on how to live a cleaner, greener life and to protect our oceans, do ocean cleanups, beach cleanups, things like that. So thank you guys so much. It genuinely means the world to me to have you guys on the journey with me. Make sure to check out plenty free resources that I have on my websites and the podcast. So yeah, thank you guys so much. I'll see you guys next time.